Okay, I know it looks really weird, but this is something that I do every time I'm about to do a really big project. I take out some blue painter's tape and I kind of put it all out on the wall so that I can see the exact size and measurements and really determine how I want the build to look in the end. It's helpful when you're trying to get an idea in your mind about sizing too. I wasn't sure how big I wanted this fireplace. So I started with the painter's tape and then moved on with the rest of the project. So there's your number one tip today. Now let's get on with this. So we have these amazing high ceilings, which I've really loved, but it's made it really hard to figure out where to put the TV and to make it look like it's meant to be there. Because of stud placement, our TV was in the wrong place to begin with, so it was a nightmare. I'm gonna start this whole project off by just building a very basic frame out of two by sixes. And the plans, written plans with measurements and everything are in a link down in the description below. I partnered up with Craig Jig on this entire project, which was awesome. And I'm using their pocket hole system to make this basic frame. So I cut two 2x6s at 95 inches long and I cut two 2x6s at 54 inches tall. This is what will make my frame. I put pocket holes in the ends of the 54 inch pieces to connect them to the 95 inch pieces. I'm using two and a half inch pocket screws to go ahead and connect those two pieces together and create this box. This is the other side of the 95 inch piece and I'm connecting the other 54 inch piece to that. This will become the top of the fireplace. I cut two two by fours at 92 inches wide to fit inside this frame. I'm using one at the bottom of the fireplace frame, and then I'll put one up towards the middle of the fireplace frame, just to add some sturdiness, and then later I'll be adding another, which will anchor it to the wall. These will be used later to be able to attach the concrete board to the front of the fireplace, and also just to add structural strength. Once I had the basic rectangular shape created, I decided to set it up and put it in place on the wall to make sure I liked the size and the placement of where it will be. I'm a very visual person, I guess, <laughs> so this helps me a lot. I set it up there also to mark the baseboards um, where I will need to remove the baseboard later on. second support here up 25 inches from the bottom because this is where I want the fireplace insert to sit. I want it 25 inches from the bottom of the floor here. Where I have it right now is too high so I'm basically bringing it down six inches from where it is right now in this and I'll bring it down once I measured 25 inches from the base, I was able to attach it just using pocket hole screws on the end of these 2x4s. Um, I did make a mistake here in that I am screwing it in vertically and later I will have to go in and change it so that it's laying down so the fireplace has something to sit on that's a little wider. Okay, so now I've made a mark right here. I have it centered on the wall. I changed the measurements just slightly and then make a mark on the baseboard. So now I'm going to take my oscillating tool here and I'm going to cut out just that section of baseboard and then I'm going to mark my studs and attach it to the studs. It's not even, I can't even fit it. There we go. This is a Ryobi oscillating tool, and I absolutely love this tool for cutting out pieces of baseboard like this or making straight cuts in flooring. It's been a great tool to have, and I'll make sure and put a link down below. So with this, I'm able to cut the MDF straight where I've made that mark and remove the baseboard just where I want to put the fireplace. Now I'm gonna mark my studs and anchor a two by four on the okay, wall. Okay, I've added a third two by four. This is the two by four that is gonna be mounted to the wall, which will anchor this entire thing to the wall. So I don't have it connected to the frame just yet. I'm gonna measure the halfway point of the two by four and mark that on my wall. I will attach it to studs 
right in here and then that's when I will lift up the frame and attach it to that stud. I'm using a four foot level to help me make sure this is nice and straight. My blue tape <laughs> design there is not level, so it's gonna look off, but it's actually level on the frame itself. Once the frame is lifted up onto this two x four that's attached to the wall, all I have to do is screw it in to the ends. I'm using Power Pro screws and going right through the frame into that stud that's attached to the wall. Now that the frame is fixed to the wall, I wanted to dry fit the fireplace and see how it was. We set it up on that two x four that I moved 25 inches up and I decided that it needed to not be vertical and to lay down for the fireplace to sit level. So I'm going to take this middle piece that was on its side and I'm making it flat so that it can hold this in a little better. So I'm going to screw it in with my pocket holes and then I'm going to make the side mounts as well. So here I measured top to bottom and I'm just using pocket holes to attach these vertical pieces to the top of the frame and the place where the fireplace will sit on. I did have to move the vertical piece on the right there a few times because I didn't account for the plug that pops out of the side of the fireplace, so I needed to make room for that. So I'm going to take the front panel off. There's those foam pieces in that we need to remove. So I've removed the screw here, and the screws on top, and there's another screw on that side in the same place as this side, and the front glass lifts off. That's so that you can change out these logs to crystals and also so I can remove these. And then I'm gonna take this back piece and put that into the wall and see if I can get it angled the way I want it to be. And this is where I had to move that vertical piece and adjust it just slightly so that this could slide in where it needed to. And I actually make a little bit of a mistake here as well, which I will fix when we start doing the cement board and I'll explain in a moment. This particular fireplace is meant to be mounted the way that I'm mounting it as one way or also to be mounted directly to a wall. So I love that it has a couple different options for mounting. I'm using these little flaps on the end of the fireplace to screw directly into the studs, which I will have to add a bumper to later so that the cement board can fit behind it. But for now, I'm trying it out and putting the glass front on, making sure it all works the way I want it to and is sitting exactly where I want it to be. Okay, I've got the glass removed. It's right here. And now I'm gonna pull these logs out and I'm gonna add the crystals instead. So the fireplace came with these crystals or the log option, and I love that you can change that out depending on your mood. I was really opting for the crystals. I think it has a nice, more modern, sleek look to it. Now it's time to cut the concrete board. I'm just marking this concrete board where I'd like to cut it. I scored it with a utility knife, but it just wasn't easy enough to get down in there. So instead I used a rotary tool and a spider diamond head cutter. And this enabled me to cut this a lot quicker. I just kind of make a nice little score in there, groove in there, and then bend it down. Okay, here's where I left off last night and I'm to my very first dilemma. So this little connector that comes with the fireplace allows you to move the fireplace out further or back further, but it's still not far enough for what I'm wanting. So with my cement board here, it's a half inch cement board, it puts it almost completely flush so that when I put on the glass panel, there is no, the glass panel fits right up against the cement board. And there's no room for my fingers to fit to lift the glass panel out in case I need to pull that off for whatever reason to change these out, to fix any problems back inside. So 
I have cut some quarter inch pieces here and I'm gonna put those in between and I'm gonna bump the fireplace out just slightly <laughs> so that I can hopefully get the glass panel out if I need to. So this problem that I ran into could probably be avoidable if you get quarter inch drywall or quarter inch um, cement board, but this was a quick solution to my problem and it worked perfectly. Okay, now there's enough room to put my fingers back there and pull the glass off if I need to. I just need to cut out the board where I put the blocking now so I can fit that in correctly. So now I'm just making a little mark where I need to notch out the concrete board to fit around that little blocking that I made. I'm going to be using these one and a quarter inch screws to screw that into the frame. I'm going to do these two side pieces and then I'm going to measure the two middle sections. These are just hardy backer screws or cement board screws and I'll make sure and put a link down below. And I'm screwing the cement board over where the studs are now. So I'm screwing directly through the cement board to a stud. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the cement board for the center pieces. I'm marking, measuring, and then using my tool to score that, and then bending it down, snapping it to the right size. This cement board was extremely messy to work with. There was a lot of pieces and dust that were coming off, so make sure you have a mask and make sure you have a little vacuum that you can use to help clean up as you go. Now all the cement board is fully attached to the studs and we can begin taping the seams. And I'm just using regular backer board seam tape and it goes over all of the seams and the edges I'm not gonna be doing because we'll be putting a wraparound mantle on. I'm also adding some blue tape to the bottom so that when I skim coat, if there's any drips, it'll be easy to clean up. I decided to go with this planning patch just after research. This is kind of what looked like what I was going for. And it's a three to one mix. So three parts of this mixture with one part water. So, and it says to mix small, to only mix as much as you can spread in eight to 10 minutes because it will start to set. So I'm gonna mix a little bit in a trowel or in a, let's see, I've got this right here all set up. So I'm going to mix a little bit in this and then see how far I can get. So my very first time mixing it, I used this foil to help with cleanup. It was a terrible idea. Don't use the foil. I ended up ditching that after the first one. I'm also using this paint mixer that you can hook up to your drill bit to help mix everything. It made it a lot easier. And I learned that your first coat of skim coat, you want to just do the seams first. I'm doing everything right here because I didn't know, and this is a learning process for me. Um, it still came out fine, but the first coat you wanna do all your seams, and then the second coat you wanna just get as much skim coat covering the surface area as possible. And then the second, or the third and fourth coat are to achieve the look that you're going for. With every single coat that you put on there, it changes the look just slightly. But as this skim coat dries, it dries to a really pretty cement-like texture and color. Honestly, this part is really fun and it lets you kind of tap into your artistic side if you have one and if you enjoy that. I found it very um, relaxing and kind of a fun process. For the next coat, I decided to cover the fireplace with this peel and stick um, saran wrap just to help protect it as I did a few more coats. I mixed up another batch and remember to only mix enough that you can spread it in 10 minutes. So I worked in small patches. Okay, so I mixed it with this paint spatula thing that hooks onto your drill. And you want it, I really like it kind of frosting texture or cake batter texture. And that's what I'm gonna use right now.
Now it's time to start working on the mantelpiece. I had gone and picked up some poplar pieces from my local lumber yard and I am using the Craig Jig AccuCut system to cut a nice straight edge. Okay, this is where things can go either intermediate or stay beginner in this entire project. I really wanted to use hardwoods, so I went to the lumber yard and got hardwood. But if you're a beginner, you can totally do this with Doug Fur from Home Depot. You can get it as thick and as wide. They make some, um, Oh, I think they're four by sixes posts. That would be great as a mantelpiece, but I really wanted to match my dining room table. So I have some rough stock lumber. What that means is that it's not straight and I'm gonna need to plane it and join it. So sometimes your lumber yard will do this for you. You can pay an extra small fee and they will run stuff through the planer. They will joint an edge for you. And you, if you don't have the tools, you can do it that way too but I am gonna be doing it myself. I do have the tools, and today I'm gonna to be using this Craig plunge saw, and I'm gonna use this to rip joint the edge. This is a really rough edge, so this is gonna take it off and make it nice and smooth. This AccuCut system is one of my favorites. It really helps if you don't have a joiner to get a nice straight edge. It's a little bit more budget friendly than buying a nice big huge joiner and you get the same effect with that nice straight beautiful edge. So I'm cutting all these rough stock pieces down to nine and three quarter inches and that was what I will use to wrap around the bottom part of the fireplace. If buying rough stock lumber from the lumber yard intimidates you at all, I do have a video all about the different ways that they measure, the things that they call different woods there, and how to kind of get around a lumber yard if you're new to that whole process. It was scary for me the first time, so hopefully this video will help you. Now I'm gonna take those side pieces, cut them down to the exact height, and I am actually just drilling them right into the two by six frame. There are a lot of opinions out there as to how you should attach these pieces to the side of something like this, but I am keeping this beginner friendly. That's the way I like to do things here. I want to empower people who are following me and you can drill it right into the side. And I'm also creating the top to be just butt joints. I did not miter the edges. I just want to keep this nice and simple and still modern looking. So I'm gonna drill this top piece directly into the two by six frame and then I will fill those screw holes a little bit later. Now with poplar, it will tend to yellow sometimes. So all the poplar tables that I make, my dining room table included, I add this white stain to it to help the yellowing and green parts of poplar that sometimes shine through. This will keep it to be a nice, beautiful white color. I'm also clear coating it with a water-based poly. This is a Verithane product and it will protect it. And then I'm gonna start on the frame for the top. And basically I am making this part the exact same way I did the base, but I'm using two by fours instead of two by sixes so that it's inset just slightly. So in the end, the bottom part of the fireplace will be nine and three quarter inches deep and the top will be closer to five inches. Now I'm using these pocket holes to go ahead and make that same kind of frame and I'm using the new Craig Jig 720 and it has that cool nifty storage place in the back so you don't lose your bits like I tend to do all the time. <laughs> and here I'm just pocket holing the side pieces into the top piece and then adding a cross piece which will then screw into the studs on the wall and that's what will anchor the top piece to the wall. So this is basically the same process as it was for the bottom portion. I'm gonna climb up on the ladder, lift it up, and then anchor it to the wall. I am going to have to notch out a place where the TV will fit, so I'm gonna get the outside frame anchored to the wall first, and then make sure I measure the pieces in the middle to allow for the TV. I decided to replace the TV while I did this portion to make sure I didn't mess up any of the measurements and so that my family could enjoy the television while I was working. So these are the vertical pieces and they are just being pocket holed to the top portion of the frame. And then at the bottom, I'll be adding some cross pieces. And at the top, I'll be adding some cross pieces so that the cement board has something to attach to. And here I'm attaching the cement board in the exact same fashion with the concrete screws to the studs. I am not adding a piece of cement board to the bottom because I want to be able to access the television from underneath or do add a sound bar or something like that later. So I'm going to be adding the skim coat there, but there will be no cement board. It's going to be going directly onto the drywall. Thank you. 
We're just repeating the process that we did on the bottom here by adding the seam tape all around all of the seams, and then I'll start the skim coating process, being very careful of the television. <laughs> I did do um, three coats of skim coat on the television portion of the fireplace, all the way up and around and underneath. Now that the skim coating's all done, I can remove the saran wrap and put the glass panel back on. This part was very satisfying to see this all come together. And there you have it. I have an entire fireplace that now makes the TV look like it was meant to be in this space. I can't tell you how much my family and I enjoy this. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching this process. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and also Facebook, and check out the links below. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this kind of DIY content. I have tons of video for you, and I'm glad you're here. I have lots more to come in 2020, so we'll see you for the next video. Talk to you later, guys.